Uh, uh My name is uh, Tim Tapunga. I'm actually uh, here in Brisbane. It's uh, the 27th of uh, December 2011. Oh, tw 2010, sorry. I'm uh, thinking about the festive season and uh, as a Samoan, I am re reading up an article about uh, the Samoan people and uh, Quite interesting, and I wrote an article, a response to a Forbes.com um, uh, uh, report on the Polynesian race. Yeah, uh, and uh, this is the article I wrote in, re in response to the Forbes. Uh, uh, report on the Polynesian race. Uh, according to Forbes.com, the Polynesian race are the fattest race on the planet. Amongst the worst health conditions in the world includes my ethnicity, the Samoans. In fact, seven out of the ten fattest nations in the world are made up of Polynesians and Micronesians. This is the only piece of statistic in which the Polynesians are at the top of the world statistically speaking. Moreover, this means that Polynesians are the most unfit people on the planet. Whilst conversely, the Nauru Prime Minister may be correct in the consolatory of solace for his people by stating that his people are not all fat, but are muscle-bound as noteworthy in the number of gold medals in the Commonwealth Games for weightlifting. Unfortunately, along with this positive aspect of strength and power with weightlifting honours has come the unenviable associated negatives with oversized powerhouses, which are the inadvertent weight-related illnesses. The overwhelming obese powerlifter may be glorious in the weightlifting arena outside of the sport of the weight-related problems. Obesity leads to various weight-related illnesses such as heart disease, diabetes, and various forms of cancer. The issue at hand in the South Pacific Forum member nations is one which should emphasize the public cost to weight-related illnesses and shorten quality of life for many overweight Pacific Islander people. The immediacy of the health issue may be considered much more paramount than any issue surrounding global warming or carbon emissions levels in the South Pacific region. In a Thomas Motu's perspective, we may view this fattening of the Pacific region as relevant conspiracy for the eradication of purportedly inferior races, insofar as that it is a eugenic hope that the Pacific Islanders will eat themselves to an early death. We may view this drastic conspiracy theory much too drastic, but with the amount of fast food outlets sprouting up in the South Pacific region means many things to eating conspiracy theorists. The notion that in a classist societies, the poor nutrition levels for poorer classes in affluent societies often means that many poorer people with poorer nutrition suffer from obesity-related diseases. Fast food, fattening foodstuffs, high choleric, and Poor nutrition, high choleric beverages have increased waistlines of many people. Lethargy and low self-esteem perpetuates the problem of weight management. Often, in affluent societies, it is the wealthier people who seem to have more time to lose weight by burning it through exercise and sport. Poorer countries, such as third world nations, which include the South Pacific nations, whose perception of weight management is a matter of cultural significance, which is very contrasting from many Eurocentric perspectives. By this I mean that the cultural values of Pacific Islanders towards fat people seems to prefer a unique perspective associated with wealth, status and privilege, rather than the disdain of lower classes by Europeans Australasians and North American societies who seem to associate obesity with poorer people, such as those people living in the welfare dependent projects and having to be subjected to eating poor nutrition foodstuffs. 
i.e. fish and chips, saturated fats and trans fatty foodstuffs, etc. In countries such as Australia, the general rule of science prejudice often perceives that wealthier people are purportedly healthier and fitter rather than the lethargically unhealthy. However, this is not the general rule as may be noted with fat cats such as mining tycoon and Queensland's richest man with his mouth full of trans fat gelatin made meat pies munching Mr. Clive Palmer. The general affluent class would tend to indulge in healthier pursuits and are wary of their health than most working class Australians. Ya tonu o le nei tu langa wa le manuia mo tangata sa mo i sa mo wa tu langa longa ono sa mo i le lau langi mo tangata la kupo mo tangata pasifika o lo o maua i le tu langa sili i le lau langi mo tangata la kupo i le lau langi ato na oru e tu sa e tu a ibasu lima pasene o tangata la kupo wa sili i le lau langi ato. O le li poti le nei mai le Forbes journalist Lauren Strive ya patai lava mai ya soi fua mai ya Manuel Tausanga Forbes.